right, um, I thought I would add a quick little video on just how to back up your database. And this is definitely something I recommend you do, especially if you're using SQLite as your database, because it's so ridiculously easy. And um, in general, I think it's just really important to have database backups um, and have them off the server stored somewhere else. And that's just so that your app uh, can be recreated if it, the server gets deleted, um, if your database gets corrupted, if you screw up a migration, stuff like that. Um, it's really nice to have. It does actually, in some circumstances, create a liability having database backups if you have sensitive data in your database, like credit cards or personally identifiable information, people's emails, deepest fears, that sort of stuff, because a copy of your database or a backup is a copy of the data. And if that falls into the wrong hands, then you've leaked data, which you shouldn't have. Um, so with that concern in mind, um, let's back up our database automatically with a script. So let's add a new script called surprise, surprise, backup, backup, database.sha. And let's do all the things that we usually do with these bash scripts. Let's make it executable. Let us add in hashbang. Let's uh, set the error flag. Let's add a comment. Backs up remote database and copies to local. Okay, cool. Now, uh, just for shits and gigs, let's print this out. Backing, backing up database. Up database on server. We should set the server to be tube server. Cool. Um, so what we're going to do basically is we're going to uh, take the database that's sitting on our server. We're going to make a copy of it and give it a timestamp so that it uh, can be uniquely identified by the time of the backup. Uh, we're going to copy it to a different location on the server, and then we're going to copy it down onto our local machine. Um, one thing that I like to do is actually uh, copy it to some sort of object storage place in the cloud, like DigitalOcean Objects or Amazon Web Services S3, which is their simple storage service, um, so that it's not on my local computer, it's someone else, it's somewhere else, and it's someone else's problem to make sure that it always exists. Um, but as a start, just backing it up onto your PC is a nice place to get started. So the first thing we need is a unique timestamp that describes the time right now. And we want to do that automatically. And I actually know how to do that. It is using um, this. So we, if we do echo quotes, I guess let me show you date. Date. Let just get to the current date. You can see time always progressing. If we can do date, add the format string plus percentage s. I looked this up. I do not have this memorized. This gives us some zany ass number. This is a it's called Unix epoch time, and this is the amount of seconds or milliseconds or something. It must be seconds because it's the same here and here. The amount of seconds since like I think 1970. It's like some random ass point in time and just the number of seconds since then. And it's just a standard way to record time in Unix as one single integer. So we will be using this to just get a timestamp in our script. So let's, it doesn't really matter exactly when we get our timestamp. So we'll just do it at the start of the script by calling time equals, and we're gonna put it in a string. In the string, we will execute some code, which is what this means. This basically says inside of this string, execute this program and then take the take the output and put it into this string so date actually i might have to do this date plus percent s so this will execute this and then take the output of this and put it into this string and this string will then be assigned to the time variable so that's handy um and then let's define our database name db name we're going to call it database dot time dot squalite three. Cool. All right. And now we are ready to get started. Let's um, SSH into our server as root at dollar server. Let's run a 
bash script on that server using a here string like we've done before. In that here's oh shit. In that here string, let us make sure that we fail on errors. And let's uh, make a directory in root called backups. Um, and I tend to, when I do this, I actually pass in this p flag, which means um, I think it does two things. I think it, if root doesn't exist, it creates it and then creates backups. So that's a nice thing where it's just like a bit more permissive rather than throwing it ever being like root doesn't exist. You can just say, well, if it doesn't exist, I can just create it for me, please. And the other thing, I think if it, this already exists, it just like ignores it then. And so this is a nice command because it'll just ensure that it exists. And if it doesn't exist, it'll create it for us anyway. That's cool. Um, and then this is the fucking simplest thing you've ever seen compared to backing up something like Postgres or MySQL. We are just going to copy from app database.sqlite3, which is the name of our database on the server, to root backups db name. That's it. We're just going to make a copy of our database, put it in the backup folder, and we're going to give it our name that has a timestamp in it. Now, you might be thinking like, oh man, just copying our database again and again and again. It's going to take up a lot of space eventually. Our database is like five kilobytes right now. There's no data in there. And um, even if there was like hundreds of megabytes of data, this would still be fine. Um, you can still back it up to the local machine, move it somewhere else and then delete it. Or, uh, you know, we've got 25 gigabytes of storage on this. It's like heaps of storage. We could back up 100 megabytes many times before it became any sort of problem for us. So I really wouldn't worry about it in the short term. And if it becomes a problem where you run out of disk space, figure it out then. Don't worry about it. Um, last thing we want to do is we want to make a local directory uh, the same way. So I'm going to make dir squiggly, which means user uh, home directory backups. I'm just going to make sure that this backup directory exists locally. And I'm going to do a secure copy um, from, I wonder what the best way to do this is. See if this works. Not sure if it will, but I'm going to secure copy from root at tutserver, which is the source. I know that bit will work from uh, root backups. And the thing that I'm going to try is this glob like everything from there to um, my backups folder. All right. Well, you know, this is a shot in the dark. This would be nice if it just, if I said copy everything from the server in this folder into this folder. Let's give that a crack. There you go, there's my database backup. Um, now, if you were sort of smart, what you would do is test this out by using the SQLite database viewer, which you can get online by just Googling. Doink, doink. Um, SQLite database viewer. I think you just get this. Yeah, this thing, SQLite browser. It's a nice little app that allows you to poke around in SQLite databases. I encourage you to do this on your backed up databases and also your local development database just to see what's in it. Uh, just out of curiosity. Uh, but this seems to work, right? Cool. We wrote our backup script in um, like 10 minutes and this will make sure our data never goes away. And you can see our database is quite small. It is actually I said it was five kilobytes. It's 140 kilobytes, which is a little bit bigger than five, but still pretty small. Um, and just for shits and gigs, let us throw this into our deployment script and do it before we do anything else so that we already always know we have a backup of our database before we go and trash our server with our deployment script. Um, so the question of should I run this or not really just depends on how big your database. If it's 100 kilobytes in 5 megabytes, 50 megabytes, if you have a lot of storage, just do it every time. Who cares? Um, you can just go and delete old ones later. If 
you um, have a huge database that's many gigabytes and you've got to think about it a bit harder, but then what are you doing following this tutorial? Because this is certainly a tutorial for beginners who are just learning to deploy Django and you're in the wrong place. Cool, so that's it. We have learned how to back up our SQLite database. Um, I might just show you a similar script that I wrote for Postgres, uh, not so that you need to uh, like copy it and learn how it works, but just for like some perspective of this is what these scripts look like in the wild. So I do some work for Annika Legal and I've written some infrastructure scripts for them. And I think I wrote some backup scripts here. And I think I wrote two, one of them for MySQL, one of them for Postgres. Uh, if this is it. So you can see, same thing, right? Uh, we're taking the time, creating a backup file, and we're just using a program called MySQL dump to throw the whole thing into a backup file, which is called MySQL bookstack timestamp.sql.gz. And then we're taking that dumped file and we're copying it onto Amazon Web Services storage place, which is in the cloud somewhere. And I think I run this every day or something. And the backup files are small, so it doesn't matter. Same thing here. Uh, this is for Postgres. It's very similar. I'm just grabbing the timestamp. I'm using uh, Postgres dump to throw it all into a backup file, which I've called Postgres blah.sql.gzip. And then I copy the whole thing to Amazon S3. And I think I just print out the results. So these scripts are not super complicated. They'll take you at most half a day to write if you're not familiar with um, some of these uh, constructs, but it's well worth it to just run it often so that you're very confident that whatever you're doing, your data is well backed up. And the one thing you just need to take care of is that the place where you're storing all your backed up data is secure so that your data doesn't leak out to the world. And you don't go give, it, give away everyone's credit card information or stuff like that. Cool. Enjoy.